All right, let's do dialysis. So dialysis is used in uh, chronic kidney disease if uh, conservative therapy is not working. And so dialysis is really just um, think about it as uh, a Brita water filter, okay? So instead of the, uh, the uh, filter working inside our body, i.e. the kidneys, the dialysis is uh, working outside of the body. So um, it, it, if you want the technical term move, or technical definition, movement of fluid molecules across a semi-permeable membrane from one compartment to another. Uh, it's used to correct fluid electrolyte imbalances, to remove waste products. It can be used to treat drug overdoses. Um, and so it, if anybody's had a chance, I don't know if anybody in, uh, when they were in their peritoneal rotation got to see the uh, dialysis of the AV shunts being placed in the arms. Um, so uh, if you were, we, you can share in class. And um, if you weren't, maybe you'll get to see it in, um, in clinical. So there are two methods, methods of dialysis. There's peritoneal dialysis and hemodialysis. And so um, this is when the patient's uremia can no longer be adequately managed conservatively or the glomerular filtration rate is less than 15, which means that the body just cannot, that, that, that uh, filter is just too packed and no longer working. So you gotta get that uh, Brita water filter externally out um, and the blood goes in it and filters out the, um, the excrement, the waste, and then um, goes back into the, body's, uh, the body all clean. So general principles of dialysis, uh, it's the movement of solutes, osmosis, the movement of fluid, and ultrafiltration, water and fluid removal. Peritoneal dialysis, um, there's a great picture in your book um, on page 1085, uh, well, 1085 to 1087, um, but it is where the catheter is going. So your, uh, your peritoneum is acting as, um, as a filter. Um, so it's in that, it, the catheter goes in the uh, peritoneum area, anterior wall, and, um, and it's, it's done either by um, a small machine or it's done by, um, I, I knew a nurse that would do peritoneal dialysis on his lunch break. And he'd go in and um, he, he would stand and eat at the sink while he was doing his dialysis and he would, um, the dialysis solution would go in and, um, and then he'd have a drain bag. So that one really worked more like, like a return flow enema, if you will, or, or just simply by gravity. Uh, but uh, there's another picture, figure 46-7, where you're seeing that the um, peritoneal dialysis can be used while the patient is sleeping. Um, so the catheter is inserted. Um, it's connected to sterile tubing system because you've got a tube now in your, in your peritoneum. So what's this patient at risk for? This patient's risk, at risk for infection um, just simply by having that catheter in there, in, in that open area. <clears throat> Uh, what else is the patient at risk for? Um, we've got fluid volume. Uh, the patient could be at risk for um, uh, hypovolemia, right? To because they're taking too much fluid out, or so this person. This person is really educated on how to uh, see how much uh, solution is going in, how much solution is going out. Um, so after um, the catheter is inserted, there's a waiting period of up to um, two weeks, um, and then um, this uh, then the patient may be using it. Here's a picture of what it might look like. Oh, here's the picture I was telling you about um, on 46.7 on the 10th edition. So what are some other complications? Peritonitis, inflammation of the peritoneal area. Um, hernias, right? So you're opening up the um, that cat the abdominal cavity, and now that opens up a risk for um, a bowel to penetrate per, uh, penetrate through. Lower back problems, um, bleeding, pulmonary complications, and protein loss. Um, think about why those would be. 
Um, so a peritoneal dialysis short training program, the nice thing about it, independence, ease of traveling. So this patient can go anywhere and do it. Whereas you're, if you're taking hemodialysis, you're actually going to a center. Um, so there's, there's greater mobility. Hemodialysis, vascular access sites. So these are these fistulas and grafts uh, that are um, in the arm. And here's a picture of what, how they do this. Um, uh, uh, you have the vascular graft, vascular access, and then you have the, um, the AV fistula. Uh, and then, uh, but uh, now, uh, this is a uh, nursing implication for you all. If a patient has a, um, uses one arm for hemodialysis, you are not taking blood pressures or blood, uh, drawing blood or inserting an IV on, in that arm. This is an example of the vascular access catheter. So this this um, this blood is going, uh, and, and it's it's uh, the gauge is is pretty big, um, because this is blood going in and out in solution. So that's kind of cool. So you can see that. Oops. Um, then uh, you also have some vascular access. So this would be the person who has um, who it might be a little more, bit more temporary. Uh, maybe the older patient um, who needs di or, dial or uh, the drug overdose patient, they're going to, so this is just like the central line where they're taking the blood out and putting the blood back in. Uh, two needles placed in a fistular graft. Um, the blood is returned from the dialyzer to, to patient through the second needle or blue catheter. You don't have to know those little details. Um, heparin is used for an anticoagulation. We don't want that line to be. Uh, to be compromised. Um, so if you have a chance, if you have a patient that's on dialysis and you get a chance to, um, they won't be um, uh, dialyzed on the med unit, they will physically go down to dialysis. You have the, if you have the chance to see that for 15, 20 minutes, uh, please make sure you do that in your clinical rotation. Um, but during the treatment, you want to be alert to changes in condition. You're performing vital signs every 30 to 60 minutes because you want to make sure that that patient isn't um, going, uh, getting uh, hypovolemic or hypotensive. Um, so uh, those are some of the complications. Also muscle cramps, loss of blood, um, hepatitis. But it's... Um, it can ease many of the symptoms of patients feeling fluid overload and having that confusion or irritability because of the waste in their system. Um, and it can prevent certain complications or further complications. Uh, if you, if uh, you have one organ failure and the body cannot maintain homeostasis, then you could have um, further, you can have uh, failure in other organs. Thanks.